My name is Hidab Tarifi, and I welcome you to today's presentation, uh, Justice in Islam. In uh, these times that we live in, it is extremely important that we take time to, um, as Muslims and as members of society, whether here in the United States or um, anywhere in the world, it is important that we take some time and understand um, what our holy book, the Quran, tells us um, about justice uh, so that we can actually not only learn, but we can find ways to um, implement it in our daily lives to become better Muslims, better citizens, and uh, better members of society at large. I'm honored to be with you today and let me share with you the different topics that we're going to discuss uh, today. Uh, we're going to talk about justice in general, um, just uh, the, the general definition, and then we're going to try to understand what justice means um, in Islam. Of course, uh, that would lead us to uh, understand uh, the impact that is, uh, Islam had brought to the uh, community in Arabia and we will uh, do a comparison uh, between um, uh, pre-Islam Arabia and uh, Islam, um, Arabia after Islam and the justice that Islam has brought to, uh, to Arabia and uh, initially and of course to uh, all humanity. Uh, we will discuss, of course, we'll go through some examples uh, uh, from the Quran, which are uh, the basis for our education, as well as examples uh, from the seerah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be uh, upon him. Uh, so without going through the details of the outline, let's go ahead and dive into uh, our presentation. So... What is Islam, what, what does justice mean? Justice in general, you know, as the uh, dictionary, the, especially the American Heritage Dictionary, uh, gives us two uh, definition of the world, the word. Justice as the principle for the moral rightness and equity and the upholding of what is just, especially for treatment and you, you reward in accordance to honor, standards, or law. Um, we can see that justice has two folds, the moral and the legal. Both components are key to the creation and implementation of, of the legal system. Of course, the law itself can be implemented in justice or an unjust way. Um, for example, uh, when a person is found guilty uh, of a crime um, and sent to prison, this is an application of justice. But when an innocent man is, uh, is found, is accused of a crime and falsely accused of a crime, of course, and subsequently is sent to prison, that is an injustice application of the law. Or for example, when you have two people who are found guilty of the same crime um, and one receives a different or less of a sentence than the other uh, for whatever reason, that is an unjust application of the law. And of course, uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I want to make sure that I address the moral um, aspect of implementing justice, uh, specifically in you know when, when talking about the the, the legal justice. Um, so, for justice to be um, done, uh, this means that the application of the law should be impartial and equal and fair to everyone um, who is uh, faced with, with a legal, just, with a legal uh, decision. So the other aspect of uh, justice in a society is equity 
And is it fair to expect, for example, um, equality in having access to resources for all members of society? Um, this is not, an, not a simple setup uh, to implement. Um, so when we talk about social or distributive justice, which deals with who gets what and when, um, of course, that actually is the basis for social justice. Uh, and we will try to address that later, um, probably not today, but um, God willing, inshallah, we look to um, uh, add another session uh, next week to specifically focus and dive deep into the social justice um, within the Islamic uh, teaching of, of justice. So uh, let's now go to what is justice in Islam? In Islam, you know, justice, uh, you know, it's placing things in the rightful place. It also means giving others equal treatment. In Islam, justice is also a moral virtue and an attribute of human personality. Justice is close to equality in the sense of it creates a state of equilibrium in the distribution of rights and duties, but they don't have to be identical because they're not. Social justice is an integral part, as I mentioned, of justice in Islam, and we will dedicate time to, do, to talk about social justice in, in Islam. Of course, there are many other terms that are used to dictate justice in behavior. So as Muslims, when uh, we go through the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us different uh, words that describe with it uh, activities that we need to be aware of and that we um, can exercise uh, justice in, uh, in those behaviors. So let's look at the words itself and what they mean. So, for example, the word adl, which really simply means just, um, it's, it's referenced in the Quran as the absolute justice, um, equality before the law, and positions of equal right. At the same time, um, when, you know, when, 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 you, when we read the word adl, uh, we understand that because it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as al-adl, the just, um, we uh, get to see other words that uh, mean, mean the same thing, means, means being just, but in different, um, at different levels and at different activities. So, for example, when we, when we get the word qist uh, or nasib or mizan, or taq, uh, taqweem. So qist in Arabic means a share. Um, the Quran uses the word qist with the mizan together, which means equal in share and in treatment. Same thing for nasib means share. Uh, taqweem is the uh, straightening. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself, one of the 99 attributes uh, that describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is the just, al-adl. And we, uh, in, in our implementation, of course, after learning from the Quran and implementation of the Quran in our daily life, we always try to uh, learn from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to implement those in our lives as much as possible. And of course, uh, justice is something that we are um, demanded to uh, adhere to and, and uh, implement in our daily lives. And we'll discuss how we can actually do that as we go through some of the examples and uh, the Quran verses and some of the practices of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let's move to the next slide. Um, one thing that is extremely important and for us to understand best what Islam brought in terms of justice, 
um, it is important to start with understanding the situation in Arabia before Islam and see what kind of justice system that existed before Islam and uh, the benefits uh, that Arabia reaped from, um, from Islam uh, spreading um, afterwards and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before Islam, the, the concept, of, concept of justice in Arabia was purely patriar patriarchal inside within the family and the tribe. Um, different tribes, if not building alliances for their safety and protection, they were in constant feuds. Uh, justice based on law, rights, duties was really foreign to Arabs um, in pre-Islam. In Mecca, for example, uh, there were, um, you know, different, different tribes that had more power and they would dictate the lives uh, of, of others. Uh, they, uh, they constantly were in feud uh, and there was really no legal system that would actually uh, be used to uh, judge. So in disputes, for example, between two parties, um, they used to refer to a third person or a third party, one who is neutral, one who is known for his wisdom, and one who is trusted uh, by others to be fair and give um, equitable ruling. And of course, such ruling would be accepted uh, by the parties in dispute. The, the poor and the weak had to align themselves with sadly, the rich and the powerful, for them to be, uh, to be protected. Um, that was the uh, known way of uh, people, you know, uh, protecting themselves. Um, so, you know, survival, for example, was the primary concern, uh, both for individuals and uh, tribes. The uh, strong and the powerful had the power. Um, and as others came to them for protection, sadly, their power was still used to be brutal toward the underdog. And this was why the, as I mentioned, the, the poor and the weak had to find um, someone who is rich and powerful and, be, and seek refuge in them so that they become their protectors and uh, make sure that they are um, uh, not uh, mis um, not abused within within um, within the society and within the tribe. Uh, Medina was uh, similar. Um, as in, in Medina, there were uh, two main tribes, and they were constantly in um, in feud and and, and war. Uh, so there was really no structure for any um, legal way to actually solve these these disputes and. We eventually learn when Prophet Muhammad, of course, was ordered to immigrate and how to immigrate from Mecca to Medina and how he eventually implemented uh, uh, the peace between those tribes and how he brought uh, people together uh, under, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the frame that, you know, people can be different, can be worked together, but uh, let's, you know, justice is, is critical for the uh, society to actually have the opportunity to grow because they will not be able to, to grow or have attained to peace if there is no uh, justice. Um, so with that, with that said, um, I want to go back to the, um, uh, the role of, of justice in Islam. You know, Islam has emphasized on uh, numeral, uh, numerous principles that organize relationship uh, among members of the society. Uh, one of the most important principles, as I mentioned before, is the social justice um, with all important values that involves uh, like peace and love and brotherhood and prosperity. Uh, so justice in Islam is not uh, only practiced on Muslims. Uh, rather, it is practiced on every human being 
regardless of his or her beliefs or religion. Um, and that was very clear when uh, Prophet Muhammad, as I mentioned, moved to Medina and established the constitution of Medina and the beginning of the nucleus of the Islamic um, uh, uh, constitution and state within Medina. Of course, there were already people there who were not Muslims, who have not con you know, become Muslims, and it was critical to establish this system so that everybody feels safe and everybody can go about their daily lives without fear and without um, being uh, you know, dehumanized or, or mistreated. And that was uh, a, a critical infrastructure for the growth of the community. Uh, so justice as a concept um, refers to equality in giving rights and in abiding and by any obligations without discriminations for any reason, um, whether religion, race, color, and that was a foundation uh, that Islam brought to uh, put a frame for uh, justice to be attained. All these uh, obligations need to be uh, um, in, in implemented and there's no discrimination based um, on any, uh, for any reason. Uh, and according to the Quran, of course, every human being is um, a vicegerent, uh, uh, a Khalifa of God um, on earth. On earth. So, uh, let me move to the next slide because we talk, we're now talking about you know um, what is justice in Islam. So, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in the Quran, when Allah created um, Adam. He created Adam uh, to, uh, to be his vicegerent on earth. And that means each and every one of us uh, are God's vicegerents on earth. And each and every one of us are responsible uh, for earth, for flourishing earth. So the role of the human being um, that the human being plays is uh, crucial, especially when interpreting you know, justice and implementing justice. So the uh, God Almighty, you know, commands us with justice. God Almighty uh, gives us the framework for what justice means, how um, everybody is supposed to be uh, receiving that justice, but God doesn't give us all the details of the implementation because the message of uh, of Islam is for all times. So things can, uh, the, the implementation can change according to the time, as long as the essence of the justice is maintained. So it is up to the human beings to not only understand God's commands and the um, God's message uh, of justice, but it is the responsibility of, of the human being to uh, attempt to apply uh, uh, the justice according to uh, his or her reasoning. So when we, when we say there is a divine justice and there's a human justice, though they, though they go hand in hand, but they're different because the divine justice is what is perfect. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect, uh, divine justice is, is perfect. And uh, that is what we people of faith expect to, uh, you know, uh, expect um, at the day of judgment, that even if we are not receiving justice on this earth, and if, uh, because of, you know, the fallible implementation of human beings of justice, then at least, thank God, we are guaranteed that justice, God's justice at the day of judgment. Uh, so yes, human human justice is is fallible because it is limited. It is limited with the human ability or inability to uh, properly interpret and implement. So um, and God tells us that God will reward us for our attempts to understand uh, justice and to um, to actually attempt to implement it. So. Uh, you know, God, you know, as I mentioned, God sets the frame for justice, but it is, uh, uh, it is us uh, that have the responsibility to uh, understand and uh, know what is just and what is injustice, what is um, 
the role of us to uh, make sure that justice is implemented and um, injustice is prevented. Um, moving to the next slide, um, this is where I want to start sharing with you uh, some of the verses from uh, the Quran that does talk about justice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions justice uh, in the Quran in, in so many, uh, in, you know, in so many verses. Uh, it's really, I mean, you could actually spend uh, uh, a whole lecture going through them, but I chose to have a few because I wanted to uh, just give you an example. And I really encourage you to, um, you know, read the Quran and do the research on your own and find uh, those verses and what they mean, uh, what they mean to you as well. So in, in Surat Al-Rahman, um, Al in uh, verses six to nine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالنَّجْمِ وَالشَّجَرِ يَسْجُدَانِ وَالسَّمَاءَ رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ أَلَّا تَطْغَوْ فِي الْمِيزَانِ وَأَقِيمُ الْوَزْدَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَا تُخْسِرُ الْمِيزَانِ And the stars and trees prostrate, and the heaven he raised and imposed the balance, that you not transgress within the balance and establish weight in justice and do not make the deficient, make deficient the balance. Allah here is giving us that example that, um, you know, he, he gives us example of what he has created for us and that he created the balance. He created uh, the, uh, you know, the, the balance in, in the universe. And at the same time, God is telling us that be careful because how you implement and how you uh, uh, act, you have to be careful not to break that balance and by making sure that you do not transgress. And God here noticed that doesn't give us, um, uh, you know, when, when, when God is telling us, you know, don't transgress, doesn't just say, you know, trans transgress against human beings, but God is including the universe, including the earth, because God is telling us that if you transgress, there are subsequences. And I'm not going to go into details, but if you look around us, you know, in everything that is happening and how human beings sadly have failed to follow this, this uh, ayah and um, hurt the universe and hurt earth, and for you know all the fires and the hurricanes and the earthquakes that we're you know seeing everywhere, uh, those are results of human being not paying attention and uh, transgressing on that balance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has uh, created um, and ordered us to uh, protect and follow. Um, let's go to the next uh, ayah, and that is in Surah An Nisa. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuhaladina amanu, kunu kawamina bilkist, shuhada alilahi wallaw ala and fusikum, awil walidain wal akrabin. In yakun ganian o fakiran, fallahu aula bihima. Bella the tabiul hawa, and tajilu, wa intalu, o toridu, fa in the laha cana bima tamaluna, habira. O you who have attained to faith, be ever steadfast in upholding equity, bearing witness to the truth for the sake of God, even though it be against your own self or your parents and, um, and kinsfolk. Whether the person concerned be rich or poor, God's claims takes precedence over the claims of either of them. Do not then follow your own desires, lest you swerve from justice. For if you distort the truth, behold, God is indeed aware of all that you do. So this is a critical, uh, a critical verse, and it is one of the bases for how Muslims look at justice that 
um, upholding justice, even if it's our, against ourselves and our, um, our parents and our closest kins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to be just. Um, you know, again, even if it's against ourselves or, you know, those we love. And compare this to what I just mentioned about the practices in, in, um, in pre-Islam Arabia and Quraysh, for example, uh, and how uh, it, um, you know, it, it uh, sadly, it was, uh, you know, it, it um, the, um, it all, they, the, the preference was only for the family against others. So unless you were part of a, of a strong family or, or, a, or a strong uh, uh, tribe, your rights were not protected. And God is warning us not to follow uh, our likes and dislikes in our own desire, because if we do, we will wrong others. And uh, of course, we will not be just. So uh, in society nowadays, um, it is critical that we uh, be careful in how we uh, treat others and uh, performing justice uh, is critical even um, if we actually ourselves are, are wrongdoers, we have to be careful that we are not wronging others. So, uh, you know, for example, you know, when, 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 uh, you, when, a, when a person, for example, witnesses a wrongdoing taking place, uh, of course, as Muslims, we're supposed to stop it. Uh, but part, of, another part of what, we, what is expecting from us too is to testify if needed. So if, um, if the person who was wronged will need support to prove his, his, or, his or her case, it is our responsibility to uh, speak up and give support um, because God knows all that we do and we cannot hide anything from him. And it is critical that we act uh, just and ensure others are receiving justice as well. So let's go to the next verse, the next slide, which is the next verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kunu qawwabina lillahi shuhada'a bilqist, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'dilu. Ta'dilu huwa aqrabu lit-taqwa, wa attaqu allaha, inna allaha khabirun bima ta'lamu, bima ta'malu. This is a critical uh, verse. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have attained to faith, be ever steadfast in your devotion to God bearing witness to the truth in all equity and never let hatred of anyone lead you into the sin of deviating from justice. Be just, this is the closest to being God conscious and remain conscious of God. Verily, God is aware of all that you do. Notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making injustice a sin. At the same time, God is telling us that uh, the, to, be, to be just is the closest to being God conscious. So, and not, let's not have the hatred of others make us unjust. If we allow our emotions to take over, then our judgment will be flawed and impaired. Um, to be just and not wronging others is part of piety and righteousness. So we should understand that God is aware of everything that we do and uh, always uh, remember um, this verse because it really guides us to uh, being just in everything, in everything that we do because we all want to be pious. We all want to be uh, closest to God. In the next uh, uh, ayah, which is from Surah An-Nisa, uh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعما يعذكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا Behold, God bids you to deliver all that you have been entrusted with unto those who are entitled thereto and whenever you judge between people to judge with justice Verily, most excellent is what God exhorts you to do. Verily, God is all hearing, all seeing. 
again, God is giving us examples of how to be just in our daily lives. So be just in dealing with others and return what was entrusted to you to its rightful owners. The obligation to do justice is absolute and is not subject to any limitation or modification with reference to the parties to a dispute or with reference to there being Muslims or non-Muslims or there being in conflict with a Muslim or in alliance with them. Uh, so it is critical that we adhere to ensuring that we return to their owners, whatever we were entrusted with. Um, and I mean, just as a simple example, you know, we, uh, in, in, we I mean, libraries are st still existing. And we, when we borrow a book, for example, uh, from the library, uh, we should not forget to return it on time. Even when, when we, you know, look now where we are now and we say, well, we're in the digital, digital format and uh, people are reading books, it doesn't matter. We borrowed a book from the library. To be just is to return that book to the library. Uh, the next uh, verse, which is in Surah Al-Hadid, and um, that actually uh, is, is important because we actually uh, learn something, uh, you know, another aspect of, of, of Islam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hadid, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ وَرُسُلُهُ بِالْغَيْبِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, even aforetime, did we send forth our apostles with all evidence of this truth, and through them we bestowed revelation from on high, and thus gave you a balance wherewith to weigh right and wrong, so that men have behaved with equity, so that men might behave in equity. And we bestowed upon you from in high the ability to make use of iron, in which there is awesome power, as well as a source of benefit for man. And all this was given to you so that God might make out those who would stand up for him and his apostles, even though he himself is beyond the reach of human perception. Verily, God is powerful, almighty. As we see in this verse, justice has been the goal of all revelations and scriptures sent to humanity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the messengers. We also understand uh, from this verse that justice must be measured and implemented by the standards and guidelines set by this revelation and by God's words. So all mon monotheistic religions promoted justice. Um, Islam came to confirm and seal the importance and the value of justice in people's lives and remind us um, that there are consequences with God Almighty if we don't adhere to his commands of implementing uh, justice for all humanity. So in uh, most of the circumstances nowadays, sadly, attempts are being made to achieve peace uh, by stifling justice and by violating human rights. Um, peace and human rights cannot be achieved in an isolated way. Um, both would be flawed in manner while segregating them from each other. Uh, let's proceed to the uh, next slide. Um, these are lessons from uh, the Prophet uh, Muhammad's uh, Sira. And I really encourage you to, uh, you know, spend time and, and read this, uh, the, the seerah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because there are ample examples of uh, uh, teaching us about justice and um, uh, he himself practicing justice, teaching his companion and ensuring that uh, everybody around him not only understand what justice is, especially as he was sending them out 
to um, spread the word of Islam that they would actually act just. So I'm, I'm giving you here a couple of examples and they're all hadith, uh, they're all uh, narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. The first one, when uh, the prophet says, um, uh, the people before you destroyed because, were destroyed because they used to inflict the legal punishment on the poor and forgive the rich. By him in whose hand is my soul, if Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad, did that, and he was talking about you know, uh, the example of stealing, I would cut off her hand. And that is, again, you know, that was the punishment at that time for someone who was stealing. And uh, it, the Prophet Muhammad was basically being somewhat of, of angry that you, you know, telling his people that you cannot continue acting as if you're in, in, in pre-Islam. Uh, you cannot continue giving a uh, waiver to, to the rich and the poor and those who were, I mean, to, uh, to the rich and not the poor, to those who have stature and, and uh, not uh, to those who uh, are not. Um, the other, uh, another example is uh, help your brother, whether he was wronged or he was the wrongdoer. They, you know, they asked the prophet, how can we help him if he is the wrongdoer? And the prophet, peace be upon him, said, by preventing him from wronging others. So again, just look at that concept is that you're standing by your, but by your brother and you are protecting and, and, and ensuring that they are actually being just, um, but making sure that they actually do not wrong others. And that's how you actually uh, be uh, just to, uh, to your own brother. Uh, seek forg forgiveness from your brother now, before a day comes when money will not avail. If you have good deeds, it will be taken from you and given to him according to your injustice. If you have no good deeds, you will actually carry some of his bad deeds. Those were teachings of Prophet, peace, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to, um, to all of us so that we can uh, understand the consequences of um, being unjust. That if you wrong someone in this life and you actually, uh, you know, pass and uh, at the day of judgment, uh, you have not, uh, you come in front of God and you have not had seeked forgiveness from that person before you passing, then that person actually will uh, basically take, uh, take away from your good deeds. And if you have no good deeds, uh, God forbid, uh, then some of the um, uh, bad deeds of that person will, will uh, you will have to carry them. And who would want to be in that situation at the uh, day of judgment? Uh, moving on to the next slide. Bear with me, we're getting close. Uh, so why is justice important? So the Quran considers justice to be a supreme virtue. Justice is a basic objective in Islam. Justice in Islam stand next in order of priority to believing in God, exclusive right to uh, God's exclusive right to, to worship. And of course, as we've just learned that it is the closest to being pious and being uh, God conscious. So, you know, the Quran does consider, you know, justice to be a supreme virtue and it is a basic objective um, in Islam. Uh, justice in Islam um, is uh, ordained by, by God, uh, not just uh, through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but through all the messengers that God had sent to humanity, as we just mentioned in Surah Al-Hadid. Um, and justice is important to attain peace. Uh, I briefly alluded to um, some of the trans transgressions that some, you know, leaders and some people try to, uh, uh, you know, call for peace without justice. And really, there is no justice. There is no peace without justice. Um, and 
peace is actually a requirement for uh, social growth, uh, individually and uh, and a society. Um, so we cannot uh, we cannot live in uh, in a in a society that is not just and expect for the individual to reach his or her uh, optimum uh, optimum potential. Same thing for societies. When societies are uh, are in constant war, you cannot expect them to focus um, on uh, building and in growing and creating uh, resources for uh, for the members of their society. Um, so it is important to understand that uh, justice is not the end. Justice is the mean, and peace is the is the goal so when when justice is implemented equally for everybody then we can actually uh have have peace um, sorry for some reason i'm missing a slide uh so when um so again you know it's a Islam approach to justice that it is a foundation, it is an infrastructure, uh, it is a must for individuals and it's a must for societies to uh, attain justice so that they can actually attain the much needed peace for, uh, for them to grow. Um, justice, you know, is uh, we, we as the vicegerents of, uh, of God on earth, we are asked to uh, implement uh, justice so that um, it becomes a foundation for the growth and the flourishing that we were supposed to uh, uh, be uh, responsible for in, uh, on earth. Whether this justice is toward human beings, whether it is uh, justice toward the uh, toward Earth or toward uh, all God's um, all God's uh, creatures, God's creation. Um, so one cannot grow in absence of uh, peace and tranquility. Um, and again, we should learn that um, in, in and hopefully next next week when we talk about social justice. We should learn that um, you know the diversity that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created uh, for us as human beings um, is uh, again another exercise for us in implementing in, in implementing justice. So it is the will of God that He created us different, and in order that we learn from one another and work together but it is a challenge for us so that we can actually um, use, use that as an exercise in, in, in implementing, implementing justice. Um, so we, um, when, we're, when we're looking at justice for human beings, we should not be distinguishing or using uh, uh, or discriminating uh, from one person to the other based on the color of their skin uh, or uh, their ethnic background or their lineage. Uh, so being just is an action, being just is a character, being just is a behavior, and how we apply uh, justice according to our faith is how we actually will be uh, judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the uh, day of judgment. Uh, so uh, how do we actually implement justice in, uh, in our daily life? Uh, by being really conscious about, uh, about the impact of what we do on other people's lives and making sure that what we do will not impact them negatively uh, is extremely important because if we fall into the trap of uh, not being just when we're dealing with others, 
we have the uh, risk. We we have we have the risk of facing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the day of judgment, where He would actually be uh, bad at us, and we will be questioned as how we uh, treated others and how we uh, implemented um, how we implemented justice. Uh, we are about four, 14 minutes away from the hour, and I really would encourage you to uh, send me questions, um, whether through the chat or the um, uh, both on Zoom and uh, Facebook. So I definitely will, will look into ad answering your questions. And as I mentioned, uh, next week, inshallah, we will go a little bit deeper into uh, the social justice aspect um, uh, of uh, justice um, in Islam. Uh, so, you know, back to uh, how do we actually uh, imp imp uh, implement justice in, in Islam? The first thing is understanding that um, justice can be delivered and can be adhered to in everything we do. Um, if you are being conscious about it and being uh, aware of how your actions, your, your, your deeds, your words uh, would impact someone else's life uh, positively or negatively, uh, that can be a, a good framework for um, being uh, careful and actually uh, implementing uh, justice in how we deal with human beings, how we deal with earth, how we deal with one another, and um, how we uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in everything that we do. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, in one of the, in, in one of the uh, verses that we recited, uh, when Allah tells us, taqwa, you know, be just, that is the closest to um, being pious. And as Muslim, we actually aim uh, to attain that level of uh, being God conscious and being closest to Allah. Uh, so to reach that level of spirituality, we are making an effort of being conscious of Allah at all times in everything we do and everything we say, because if we don't, we uh, actually will answer to have, will have to answer to him at the day of judgment. So uh, God is already giving us a framework and that is an easy framework, especially in this day uh, and age uh, um, where we um, look around and we see a lot of justices so injustices happening to, um, to others, uh, it is critical that you not only stand up for yourself, but you stand up for others. Um, uh, the youth, for example, when, um, when they see someone being bullied, it is important that you know, they actually uh, work on uh, giving that person justice by standing up for him or her, protecting them. Uh, so being just is the uh, closest uh, to being um, God conscious. Um, I, before I look at the, some of the questions, I, I see some of them are, are coming. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to share with you the books that I actually have used in preparing for this presentation. And both books, by the way, are available at the uh, bookstore of the Islamic Center. So the first one is In Pursuit of Justice by Dr. Meher Hathout. Uh, it does look at, you know, uh, human rights uh, in general, and it's a great, it's a great uh, a book that you can actually find uh, a lot of different, uh, you know, topics that relate to human rights and uh, supported by, of course, verses from the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. So in pursuit of justice, I recommend you actually find it. And the other one, which is Next week, I will be using a lot and reference in uh, talking about social justice, and that is a book by Dr. Fatih Osman, Concept of the Quran, a tropical uh, reading. It's a, it's a book, you can see that I use it a lot, but it is uh, a valuable book, and hopefully we will talk. Uh, we will use it next, uh, next week extensively. Uh, let me see some of the questions. I have about a few more minutes. 
So, um, so I'm just wondering what are the Islamic terms for freedom and equality? Now, equality, of course, just remember that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the frame of being equal in the eyes of God. And we are equal in the eyes of God and God gives us that frame. But when we actually talk about the human beings implementing, interpreting and implementing, we actually find, uh, sadly, uh, you know, discrepancies because people are limited in their own implementation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, created all of us uh, different but equal in the eyes of God. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, if you're white, if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, you're all equal in the, in, the, in the eyes of God. And the best of you is the closest to Allah, the most pious. So God judges us not on the color of our skin, but God judges judge us on the um, actions and the deeds that we do and how close we are to, how do we follow and adhere to his rulings and how close we are uh, to uh, being, being pious within the definition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So doing good deeds is critical. It doesn't matter if you're uh, the color of your skin or um, how you know, rich or, or poor you are. Um, freedom, you know, again, uh, we are all, God created everybody free, free to, um, uh, free to, to live a life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, established for us on earth uh, within the guidelines that Allah had given us. So one can be free in practicing, interpreting and practicing, um, but we all have to understand that we are free in the eyes of God within those boundaries that Allah had given us. If our freedom transgresses on someone else's freedom, then our freedom, then that is not our freedom. You know, our freedom stops if it imposes on someone else's freedom. Um, and that's part of the justice that we talked about, that we, for us to uh, be, be just and act in justice, we have to understand the impact of our actions and our, um, uh, uh, you know, our words on, on other people's lives. So it's important that we do not transgress and we do not uh, be uh, wrongdoers to others. Uh, let's see some of the other questions. Um, what, uh, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I, I don't see other questions here. But if you have, I mean, as I mentioned, I really would like for you to join me next week because next week I want to uh, dive deep a little bit into the social justice aspect. Um, with everything that is happening uh, nowadays, whether it's you know, local to our cities or uh, our country or, you know, uh, over the world, uh, everybody's talking about social justice. But what does social justice uh, mean in Islam? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, giving us as a roadmap for us to implement um, social justice. What it means to each and every one of us, but what it means to the society at large. Um, there's a lot. Uh, social justice is, is, is one of the basics of uh, basic foundations that Islam came to implement. Um, and as you saw when I talked about, you know, pre-Islam pre uh, Arabia, there were a lot of, uh, you know, transgression on, on, on individuals. Uh, so the individual rights were, were not protected. Um, yet Islam came and gave the individual uh, the, the status that they actually can and be accountable to what they do. And God gave benefits to being, uh, being an individual, but at the same time, God gave responsibility, whether on an individual level or to the society at large. Uh, so when we take justice and try to implement justice in our lives, we're working on improving ourselves. 
improving our character, improving our behavior, so that we are true vicegerent of God on earth. So we're, we are worthy of his, uh, of his love and, and uh, at the day of judgment, uh, you know, his rewards. So when we talk about social justice, that is the next level. So you take whatever you learn to be a, a, a good person and a just person and try to implement that in society so that you are benefiting others. You are improving the lives of others and improving the society that we live in at, uh, at large. So it is critical that we discuss that. I really look forward to seeing all of you next week. And I appreciate the time that you have given me today. I am honored and blessed to be with you. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. May Allah bless you all. Please stay safe wherever you are and take care of yourself, take care of your family and take care of your loved ones and be just in everything that you do and be God conscious. May Allah accept from all of us and may Allah bless each and every one of you. Thank you and God bless. Salaam alaikum.